Hi, good morning. For those of you who don't know me yet, I'm Mrs. Heidekevich, Mrs. H. I teach in the science department and I'm a dorm parent in Blake. Woo, Blake. I mean, come on, guys. All right, <laughs> this summer I read the all community read, The Midnight Library, and it really resonated with me. So I hope you all have taken the time to read it. If you haven't yet, it's a really good book, and um, do it over the upcoming holiday break or during winter term. I think you'll get a lot out of it, as I did. One of the book's central themes is about not being burdened with regret, which made me want to share my story with you today. So I went to Notre Dame for undergrad and chose to study medicine, specifically with the intent to go to veterinary school, post-grad, because I've always loved animals. Notre Dame didn't have a pre-vet program, so I created one for myself and spent two years in internships trying to figure out what kind of veterinary medicine I wanted to pursue. I worked in small animal clinics and with large animal vets, and I even worked in a zoo for a while. I decided that I would be a small animal veterinarian, that's dogs and cats, but I would take a year off before going to vet school. Mr. H and I got married the summer after I graduated from college. We moved to Chicago for a year while we saved up money to buy a house. Um, there you go. So this is a picture of the summer I was getting married. Um, I was 21, which is super young. And my dad, in preparation for the wedding, he had cut down a tree. And in the tree, there were, was a, a nest with baby birds in it. And the baby birds hadn't opened their eyes yet. <laughs> so I decided I was going to save them. And luckily, I worked in a vet clinic at the time, and so I had to bring my birds with me every day to work because I had to feed them every 20 minutes with dog food and dirt and, like, shove it down their throats. And they thought that I was their mom. So when I would come near them, they would, like, squawk, and I'd have to feed them. And um, I had to sort of teach them to fly, which was another story. And <laughs> really bizarre, but actually it was really a great distraction because I couldn't really worry about the wedding because I was so busy with these birds. And eventually they flew off, and so hopefully they had their own little bird families. But that is, that's my, those were my birds. <laughs> All right. So during that year in Chicago, I worked as a vet tech in a small animal hospital. Being a vet tech is like being a nurse to animals. I assisted in surgery, I did some procedures like dentals, I took x-rays, I drew blood, which is really hard from cats, don't even get me started, and I cared for sick animals. But as the year progressed, I started to really have some doubts about the path I had chosen. I was not finding the work as interesting as I thought it would be. The veterinarians I worked for were not really happy with their careers. The money wasn't great and the hours were terrible. But we had made big plans for our future with me as a veterinarian, so I was going to follow through with them no matter what. Anyone who knows me knows that when I commit to something, I give it 110%. So I pushed down those doubts, and we headed to St. Paul, Minnesota for me to attend veterinary school at the University of Minnesota. I loved my vet school classes. I got to take my first anatomy class, and I was really good at it. We learned about small animal anatomy, dogs and cats, but also large animals and exotics, rabbits, birds, all of it. I would organize extra help sessions at night to help some of my peers who were having a hard time with the classwork, and I was surprisingly good at that too. But my doubts about being a veterinarian continued to grow. I never said a word to anyone, even my husband, because I believed that I was stuck. I'd chosen this path, and I thought I had to stick to it no matter what. We had moved to Minnesota. We had bought a house. Mr. H had quit his job and gotten a new one in Minnesota. We had left our friends and our families. We planned everything around my career. There was no way I could change my mind now. I kept pushing through, but the constant knot in my stomach told me something wasn't right. Today, counselors tell us to listen to our bodies. Back then, I didn't know that. I was stressed out and anxious, and that manifested as excruciating stomach pain. I went to so many specialists trying to figure out what was wrong, not understanding that my stress was literally making me sick. Finally, I hit my breaking point. I was with my classmates having lunch between classes, and someone came up running, excitedly exclaiming that there was a llama in the hospital with a rare heart problem. My fellow vet students rushed off to check it out, and I just sat there, eating my ham sandwich and realizing that I really didn't care. 
I cared about my classes. I cared about what I was learning. But it, when it came to working on the animals, I just didn't care enough. And to do that job properly, you have to really care about your patients. I knew I loved animals, just not enough to devote my life to them. And that's what's required to be a vet, a good one at least, and I didn't want to be mediocre or miserable. That night, I finally broke down and told my husband how I was feeling. It all came out of me in a rush. My doubts, my worries, and my feelings of responsibility to stay in vet school. We were in debt because of my school loans. We built all our plans around me becoming a vet. We had dreams about opening our own veterinary clinic, and we imagined that future together. I thought he'd try to convince me to stay in vet school, but instead he gave me an incredible gift. He told me it would be okay if I wanted to leave veterinary school. He said I needed to find what would make me happy and that he'd support whatever decision I made. Relief rushed over me at that moment. I realized I could change my path. I actually wasn't stuck. I thought I would be a failure by not following through on what I had set out to do, but I was learning that I owed it to myself to be able to change my mind when things didn't feel right. This was my whole future we were talking about, and I wanted to find a career that I, I was passionate about, not something that I did only because I had chosen it when I was 19 years old. I'd never done anything like this before, but the next day I walked into the dean's office and told her I was leaving. And those terrible stomach pains, they disappeared the day I walked out of veterinary school and they never returned. I spent the next six months trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life and I kept coming back to those late night extra help sessions at vet school. I'd loved my classes, I loved learning, maybe I'd love teaching. So I got my master's of education and the minute I stood in front of a class, I knew that teaching was the right choice for me. In the midnight library, Nora faces her book of regrets. As I read, I kept thinking about my own life choices, especially the big one to leave vet school. And I realized that decision would never make it into a book of regrets. I don't regret that I went to vet school because I found my love for anatomy there. I'm really good at dissecting things, which is gross, but I love it. I have some crazy vet school stories. I met some lifelong friends and Mr. H and I renovated our first house together there, which has become a really fun side gig for us. But I am so grateful that I listened to the voice inside me that knew I was not on the right path. Someday you may find yourself in a similar situation. You might feel stuck as if the train has left the station and you just have to suck it up and keep going, even if your gut tells you otherwise. But I'm here to say that you should listen to your inner voice, take a step back and realize it's never too late to make a change in your life. If I hadn't done that, I wouldn't be here today loving every silly, fun, challenging, sometimes difficult, always entertaining moments with all of you. Thank you.